Thank you, everybody. So it was an incredibly cold winter day in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I was waiting outside the closed gates to Zoo Atlanta, patiently waiting for my host to arrive. And I remember feeling so anxious about this moment because I wanted it for so long and I didn't have any idea what was going to happen. Suddenly, the gates had opened and my host, Jody Kerrigan, had arrived. She was the four, one of the foremost primatologists at Zoo Atlanta, and she was going to be my escort on this journey. During our walk, she had told me about many tales about how she had befriended a, a gorilla named Ivan. Now, Ivan was unlike all of the other gorillas under her care. He was very unique. He was raised by a human family as a member of their family for the first three years of his life until he'd become too strong to where he was then placed into a shopping center in Tacoma, Washington, where he was a solitary gorilla for 27 years until he was relocated at Zoo Atlanta. During our walk, she had told me many different stories about his human traits, about how he didn't like to get his feet wet. So the zoo would give him various different burlap sacks that he would strategically place across the wet grass so he could go venture forth onto a hillside and enjoy a nice warm sunny day. About that, he liked human females. So much so, Jody was a human, she, Jody was a blonde female. She actually had to dye her hair brown because blonde females was his favorite and he showed her that a little too often. <clears throat> also, another story about how he was the only gorilla that would approach the glass to engage with the human visitors on a daily basis. All of the other gorillas could care less about connecting with any of the humans, but Ivan wanted to connect. He wanted to say hello. And lastly, a story about how during their friendship for a period of two weeks, he started to shun her and she couldn't figure out why. And then she finally figured out she was pregnant. And he, on some level, he knew this, and he also knew it wasn't his, and he was jealous. We finally arrived to our destination, this large concrete compound with a steel door in the middle of it. And she ushered me inside into this large cavernous room with a long hallway. And on either side of it were just cages. Gorillas were everywhere. At this point, Zoo Atlanta was home to about 24 gorillas, and on this particularly cold winter day, they all had to remain inside. As we walked down this long hallway, she had looked over me with a stern expression, and she had said, Earl, Ivan doesn't like any of the other male caretakers here at the zoo. He will not remember you, and he will most likely be aggressive towards you simply because you are a male. We got to the end of the hallway into the very last enclosure, and I looked over to the left, and there stood a gorilla in the, very in the very back of it, far larger than all the rest, almost twofold. He turned around, and he saw a male with his favorite female, and he rushed the bars with the force of 10 men. He slammed that steel as hard as he could. I stood resolute looking at him as he had looked at me, and we made eye contact and something remarkable had happened. He, you know, he crooked his head off to one side, he spun around in this joyous little motion, and Jody leaned in to say, he does remember you. And why does he remember me? Because it was my grandfather that had first caged him. In the late 1940s, my grandparents had started a store called the B&I. They quickly adopted a circus store theme and part of that promotion was featuring exotic animals for shoppers. During the 1950s and 60s, the B&I was home to elephants, lions, tigers, chimpanzees. They even had a seal pool at one point in the middle of the store. With a fully functioning zoo license from the state of Washington, uh, and a wildlife trader approached my grandfather about purchasing a baby male gorilla. He had the means to do so, and he did. For the next three years, Ivan grew up in the, the family home of the Johnston family, who operated the B&I um, pet store. And he grew up as another member of their family. He sat at the dinner table and ate dinner with them. He had refrigerator privileges. Anytime he wanted to get an apple, he could open the door, get a little crisper, and pull it out. They took him to the park, and he would swing on the swings. 
and he would even enjoy a nice motorcycle ride on the shoulders of his brother Larry every now and then, until he become too strong and too powerful to be raised in a household any longer. On March 3rd, 1967, the decision was made to move Ivan to the B&I Circus Store, where he would remain for 27 years as a solitary gorilla, only engaging with humans and children like myself, never seeing another gorilla. I don't stand here to advocate or defend any of these actions. I simply stand to tell the lessons learned from them. From the, you know, after the 80s and the early 90s, the attitude towards Ivan's captivity had begun to change, and many protests were starting to happen in this area. And in 1994, the difficult decision by our family was made to actually relocate Ivan to Zoo Atlanta for a more natural habitat and to be with other gorillas of his kind. <clears throat> During this moment, 16 years later, there I stood at the zoo, looking at him as he had looked at me, much like I had done so much when I was a kid. He had two enclosures here at, at Zoo Atlanta at the time, and I walked from one to the other, and he simply followed me wherever I went. Another human trait that Ivan displayed was that he liked to drink water from a cup. He was the only gorilla that did it. And uh, so he had this large red Coca-Cola plastic cup that he had sitting in one corner of the, one of his enclosures. I went over there and I sat, right down next to that cup, and he quickly and joyously kind of came right over to be by my side. And in his enthusiasm, he sat down on his cup and he broke it into all these little pieces. And so Jody had said, Ivan, you can't have that cup. You need, to keep, you need to give it back to me because your teeth are bad and it's all broken. So he tried to put it through the bars and she said, Ivan, it's not gonna fit. So he took it back, he flattened it out, and then he passed it underneath the bars. And she said, Ivan, there's still a piece, you know, right over there that I need you to give me. He took that piece and passed it through the bars to give it to her. And she said, Ivan, there's one last piece right there. You need to give them that last piece. And much like a child being scolded for not cleaning his room, he emphatically rolled his eyes at her while he handed that last piece of plastic <laughs> over to her. He understood every single word she had said. And for the next 45 minutes, she allowed me to be alone with Ivan. I sat and I talked with him much like I did when I was a kid, and I told him everything I could about myself. I told him everything I could about the people that he had left behind and the people that once called him family. I then said my thank you to him for having his life be part of mine, and I said goodbye to him for one last time. A couple years later, on August 12, 2012, I got a phone call detailing that Ivan needed to, hadn't been eating and he needed to undergo a diagnostic procedure. He simply never woke up. He quietly passed away at the age of 50 with his favorite human by his side, Jody Kerrigan, holding his hand. A true testament to how loved this gorilla was his entire life. <clears throat> I share this story with you for two different reasons. The first being connection. Through his human heritage, Ivan was able to engage with our culture in a way that our history has never been able to see before. His story has been told through countless periodicals, novels, and even two motion pictures to become arguably what could be the most chronicled animal ever. <laughs> And through these different stories, each one of these authors detailed their very vision of what Ivan's life should be like. The second reason I stand here is because of me. Um, when I was an adult in my years, I had finally realized that his story was so intertwined with mine, had it not happened, I would not even have recognized myself. His story has so much roots in who I am as a person that all of my joy and my happiness and my sorrow and my anger, my shame and my love, they all have elements in Ivan's story. It helped shape who I am and I like who I am as a direct result of who he was in my life. Not only gorillas, but all species that we share this planet with 
are in peril as a direct result of our actions. Poaching, deforestation, disease, climate change, they may top the list, but the list continues to grow simply because we refuse to respect the fact that we share this world with these species if we don't own it. Now, we can't change the world and solve the world's problems all in the blink of an eye, but if any change were to happen, it's going to have to start here. We can all inspire others to share in a vision to be an advocate for those that don't have one, and we can all nurture the ideas of a world that could be. Ivan did all of these things and more. So paint your own painting, write your own story, tell your own truth, and then you'll be able to change the world just like this gorilla did once so long ago. Be Ivan. Thank you. Thank you.